Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. It's Friday and I hope you have some very exciting plans for the weekend. Whatever you do, please be safe and stay healthy. Today's video is going to be some of our favorite boho Dollar Tree DIYs that we've completed. So these are gonna be clips from previous videos and projects that we've done. We wanted to combine them all into one video for you. We hope you enjoyed. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which one's your favorite. Have a wonderful weekend. We're gonna be making that boho planter and we're gonna be using these two different types of nautical rope from Dollar Tree. The first thing I decided to do was completely take apart one whole rope into the three strands. Now I wanted it to have a little bit different of a look than just twisted up rope. So that's why I took it all apart. What I'm doing is putting a little bit of glue here on the end and I'm going to go through and braid the entire rope. So find something a little bit heavier that you could put on the end just to make it easier for you. And then what I did is went through the whole thing and braided it all back together. Once you have it all braided together, you can go ahead and cut off the excess and then put a little bit of hot glue on the end here and twist that together to hold it from falling apart. Now that we have our braided rope, we can go ahead and start gluing it. Now this is just a vase that we had from Dollar Tree. Originally, we were gonna use it for a different project a while ago. That's why it's painted white, but essentially you can use this on any size or style vase that you like. So the most important part is to have this bottom row completely glued down. And then after that, you can wrap the rope around a few times and then glue it down. The main thing you wanna do is have that bottom row and the top row completely glued. And the other thing here is once we've gone around quite a few times and we're getting close to the end of the rope, make sure you pay attention because you want to wrap it to where you're when you're cutting it and you're ending that rope, it's on the back side of the vase where we first started because you don't want to have it wrap around to the front and then have that seam. And then what I'm doing here is moving on to that softer white rope. And again, I completely unraveled that but what I'm gonna use is just one strand of those three. And again, I'm just gluing those ends together so they don't fray. So this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier is we're not going to use the entire rope. We want to strategically cut this so that it's at the back where we first started. So make sure to line that up, go ahead and cut that and then we can glue that down and then we'll start with our other rope right there. So I decided to start in the middle. So about half of my vase is the braided rope and then half is this softer white strand. And you can do it really however you guys would like. You play around with different design ideas. Hopefully this just gives you a little bit of inspiration on how you can create it yourself. And then I just ended up using the white rope to go all the way up to the top. So I ended up using eucalyptus from Walmart. I think it's $1.50 for pick. I used two of them. Definitely go check out what Walmart has. They have an awesome selection for you guys at a really good price. For this project, you'll need one plunger and one mop. Screw off the top of both of those items. You will not need the top to the plunger and you won't need the pole to the mop. Then just pull out the actual mop part. Then 
to give this a stained look, I used the Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle and I watered it down and brushed it onto the whole plunger stick. Now it's time to add all the pieces to the plunger stick. So for the ends, I did three pieces of the mop and then I'm going to wrap it around like this and tie it on. I did two of these on each side. Then you'll grab another set of three, but this time you're going to make one end shorter than the other so that there's a longer piece and do the same thing. Then for the longest pieces in the middle, I only grabbed two pieces of the mop and you're going to wrap it around and make sure that one end is very, very short. And then I did two of the longest pieces in the middle. Then you'll go back to the three pieces of yarn and do another medium size one like you did on the other side and make sure they line up. I put my pieces a little bit too far out so I'm just scooting them back into the middle. And then finally for the shortest ends you're going to grab six pieces of the mop and wrap it around both of the sides. To give it a little bit more symmetrical and triangle look, I just went in and started cutting all the pieces. Now we're going to take care of all of the smaller pieces that are at the top. You'll want to hot glue where they kind of meet at the knot and then cut it right there. I would try and do this all on the back side if you can, so I flipped it over and just pulled the smaller pieces to the back, and then I'm just going through and hot gluing it and cutting it as short as I can. Once that is complete, you can leave it like this, but I wanted a little bit more added to it. So I got these beads, they're just unfinished wooden beads from Amazon and I'll link that below and I just put them on some twine and then I'm going to hang it in the front. Now it's time to add some twine so that we can hang it up. Okay, so moving on to this vase. This was a lot of fun to work on. However, if you've never worked with these little sticker beads, they can kind of be difficult to, I guess, form how you want it. But the more you do it, you kind of get used to working with it. So the first thing that you want to do is start at the very top with one of these strands. And then I worked just diagonally across it and down to the bottom. So we don't want to go straight down. We want to work across the vase and then down to the bottom. As you get to the bottom, you can go ahead and cut off the excess of the beads that you have there. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this was to split your vase into quarters. So wherever you started your first strand, I went directly across from that and I started my second strand of beads. 
and just trying to keep kind of the same line and diagonal um, movement that I did on the first strand of beads. And then again, as you get to the bottom, you can cut that off. Okay, now that we have two of these strands down, we can simply put the next two in between these. Again, we're trying to section it off into quarters. So place it at the top of the vase in between the two strands. And then you'll want to run that down diagonally. Once we have the four going in the same direction, we want to repeat this process, sectioning it off into quarters. But what we want to do is go the opposite way now, diagonally down to the bottom of the vase. So pick two strands of beads here, like you can see, and then we'll want to place this one in between those at the top. And then as you come down, you will intersect the original strand. So go ahead and cut those off. And then we can continue on the other side of that. Now, if you end up cutting, say like one, two or three pieces of the bead strand, and uh, what we want to do is save that for later. So go ahead and place it on the mat that they come on originally, because once we get to the end of this vase, we will need some of those smaller strands to complete this. And I'll show you that a little bit later. And while you're placing the beads on here, I would suggest to just lightly lay them down on the vase to get an idea of the direction or the line that you need to go. And then once you figure out how many beads you need in between these strands before you cut it, just gently lay it down on the vase. That way you don't have to worry about trying to pull it up off. They do stick really well. So if you press it down hard, if you try to pull it off, it can rip the beads off of that glue that it comes with. So just gently lay it down, get an idea of where you need to put it. And then once you've cut it and you know exactly where it needs to go, then you can press it down for a firmer hold. Okay, so once we have all of those strands from the top running to the bottom, the next part we want to do is go in between all of these gaps and we're going to create like a diamond shape. We're going to just follow the lines that we've created with another inner line. Hopefully this is all making sense. I think with me kind of explaining it and visually being able to see it, you'll understand what I'm saying here. So once we've gone through and put these diamonds in those gaps, you can see it looks like now instead of having one strand come from the top to the bottom, it looks like we ran three. So those eight original strands now kind of look like three and that's the effect that those diamonds will give. So if that doesn't make sense, please let me know in the comments so I can try and help answer any questions. And to finish it up, we're going to use this Krylon spray paint in gloss wipe. If you guys have a brand of spray paint that you really like to use, let us know in the comments. I'd love to know what paint you find the best. And to finish it up, we're gonna use some eucalyptus. Now I wanted to give you a couple options that you guys could go with. These two smaller picks are from Walmart and they were, I believe, about $1.50. This bigger one I think would look good as well, uh, about three or $3.50. And the other option that looks really good is the fern from Walmart. And that I believe is also $1.50. For this next project, I will be using these craft sticks from Dollar Tree. Just lay them out in a diamond pattern and you can make as many diamonds as you want. It's just about how long that you want it. Once they were all laid out, I just separated the tops from the bottom. Once 
One of them will be a template one, so we will just hot glue that together. And then I'm going to be using that one to make sure all the rest of them are the same size. With all of those hot glue together, just line them up how we had them before because we're going to start hot gluing them together. So when I was putting this together, I did spend quite a bit of time making sure they all kind of go the same way or like a certain pattern. It really doesn't matter in the end because we will be putting tiny cubes over the top where they all connect so you won't even see that anyways. When you're making any of our projects, we use hot glue just for time purposes. We both would recommend using a stronger glue like E6000 for any of our projects. Also, if you are ever wondering what products we use, there will be a list in the description below. This is what it should look like after all four pieces are put together and I will be using these wood craft cubes from Dollar Tree just so that you can hang stuff on top of this. I placed the craft cubes just everywhere that the craft sticks met. And then I just hot glued them all onto those spaces. When you glue them on, just make sure that they are straight and not turned sideways. This is what it looks like finished. You can leave it this natural color or I am going to go ahead and stain it with this dark walnut stain. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer it just the natural wood or stained. Now that this is finished, we just put nails under the top triangle areas and you can hang jewelry or plants or anything you'd like. We're gonna be creating the jewelry and accessory shelf and organization. And we're gonna use six of these Dollar Tree palettes and then I decided to stain them with Ipswich pine stain give it a little bit of a darker color but still keep it a natural looking wood once we have those stained we can move on to connecting all of our pieces and we're gonna glue it on just like this so we're gonna have the bottom piece and then the top piece that goes vertical we're gonna glue on top of there now if you would like to you can always use a stronger glue we use the hot glue for time purposes you could also even add a little staple in the back to connect these for added strength so i would recommend doing that for a longer hold and then after we've connected those two pieces we're going to simply repeat that process but i'm going to glue the next pieces onto those that we already glued together and then we'll go ahead and glue all six pieces together. Once we have all of our pieces glued together, you could leave it just like this as a floating shelf to put little decor pieces on it, but I wanted to take it a little bit further. So I'm using one package of these suction cup hooks and we're just gonna go ahead and remove the hook part from the suction cups. We won't need those suction cups, just the hooks. It does come in a pack of nine, but I only ended up using eight of them and I spray painted all of them gold. This next step I would do before spray painting though, so you can avoid wiping off some of that spray paint. What you wanna do is go ahead and take some pliers and bend the top of that back. That's the part that we're gonna actually glue onto our shelf.
I decided to put it in each of these little spaces. That's why I used eight of them total. And then as you can see here, we're just gonna glue right here that part that we bent. We're gonna place it up and under there and glue it on the bottom. As I was finishing this up, I really like how it turned out. I think the overall look, especially with some decor on top, just looks high end, a very kind of modern boho look. We are going to start with one of these Dollar Tree buckets, some of this decorative nautical rope, and then also this newer white nautical rope. I unraveled all of the pieces so that it wasn't so bulky and so that this whole entire rope would last a lot longer. I started at this little lip on the bottom and I will be hot gluing this rope all the way around. When you go around, the bucket again you don't need to hot glue it except for right in the back if you do hot glue it all the way around it will look a little bit more messy this is how far i got with one strand of rope just remember to keep all of the beginnings and ends in the back this is about how far i went up i would say it's about a fourth of the way up and then to get it to look just a little bit cleaner, I took a lighter to burn all the little ends. And you will not need to do this with the lighter nautical rope, it's just this twine one. Now we are going to do the same thing that we did before, unravel all of this lighter nautical rope and start it where you ended the other nautical rope and then just wrap it around like we did before and only hot glue it in the back. This is how far one strand got me, so as you can see, it will last quite a bit longer. And this is what it looked like finished. This is the back where you can see all the start and the stops. Now we are going to put one on the very top, and this one will go along the top, and then it'll wrap around the handles. So this is what I was talking about before. You will just grab all of this rope and just wrap it all the way around. When that is wrapped all the way around, just continue on with the very top. This is how the back of mine looked. I just kind of overlapped it so it was a lot more hidden. The white was just a little too bright to me, so you can grab like one of those burlap bags or something from a Dollar Tree to cover it, but I'm using truffle and white Waverly chalk paint. I'm mixing it together to make kind of a tan color to paint the whole inside. If you are going to do this, I would recommend doing it before with a spray paint or the paint. This is where you could have stopped. I went a little extra because I don't know when to stop. So I grabbed more nautical rope, unwound all of it, and then braided it. And then I'm going to be going on the inside and then you can do two rows with this. When you're done with that second rope, just cut it where the first one started and tuck it kind of underneath. This part is also totally optional, but I took another rope, undid everything, and I will be tying a knot on one end, braiding it, and then tying another knot on the other end. With the ends, I will be brushing them out, and using like a dog or a cat brush works really well. And then you will just want to cut them both even. 
With that complete, I will be wrapping it around the back and kind of overlapping it in the front. You will want to hot glue the back and secure it and then on the two sides and then of course in the front. Let me know what you think in the comments. Would you have gone as extra as I did or would you have stopped a few steps before? For our baskets, we're going to start with this bowl. This is just one of the little garden bowls from Dollar Tree and some jute twine. And you can use any kind of shape you want. This is the one we decided to go with. And we're just going to start with hot gluing the center here with the jute twine and then going around and around. You want to make sure that you're using quite a bit of hot glue to secure all of the different strands. Now, I ended up doing this a couple different ways. One was with the hot glue, and another way was with Mod Podge. I've seen people use like Saran Wrap or a cling wrap to go over the bowl first, and then they'll Mod Podge around that, and then put the actual jute or rope over that to give it a little bit more structure, and then after you can just pull the uh, saran wrap or that cling wrap off and it should work really well we didn't have any on hand so i tried a couple different ways i think using the mod podge worked out the best i feel like the hot glue didn't look as clean afterwards when everything was dried and you want to make sure that you're doing it on the outside of the bowl that way when whatever glue you're using dries it's on the back side of the basket not the inside so you can see here we're using that jute twine again and just mod podging as we go we found this to just be kind of the easiest and cleanest way to do it and if you guys have other ways that you found that work better or seen other youtubers do it let us know in the comments we'd love to know what your opinion is or other ways to uh, make this work I decided to make one of the baskets out of this nautical rope and for this I would suggest using the hot glue Mod Podge I don't feel like would work very well since it takes a while to dry and the rope is quite a bit stiffer. I went along here and in between each strand as I went around I would just put a few little dabs of hot glue and then hold up for a minute. The other reason I like the hot glue here is it dries fast and it actually looked pretty good compared to with the smaller jute there was just a lot of it on the back this you can hide in between each row of nautical rope so it doesn't look bad at all and just be careful as you're going along here that you don't put too much glue it can run into the front so we want to avoid any of that seeping through as you can see i'm just putting a few little dabs as I go and then I'll hold it for just a moment and continue on. Now here's our three little baskets. The base one is more of a basket. The other two are kind of flat. We ended up running out of the jew and the rope and we're trying to stay home as much as we can so we just ended up using what we had i still think they look fine and what we're doing here is just taping it off i went right in the center and just some masking tape and then make sure you press down on the side that you're going to be painting that way we can avoid any of that going through to the other side for this first one i'm just using some ink chalk paint from waverly and don't be afraid to go in there and put as much as you can. It does use quite a bit since it is the rope, but as you can see there, it looks really nice. And we're just gonna pull off the tape here and that will leave us with a very nice clean line. For the larger basket, we're using the white Waverly chalk paint. And as you're painting and you get closer to the actual tape, I like to press down on the edge of it and that way it kind of helps you from getting any paint underneath the tape and gives you a clean straight line.
as you can see they're coming out really nice and for the last one we're going to use the mineral chalk paint also from waverly and just do the same thing as the other two we wanted to go with a little more of a modern look on these baskets that's why we decided to paint them uh let me know in the comments though do you guys like the paint would you keep them as is or if you've seen any other ways to paint these to make them look cool i'm interested to know what you guys think and what suggestions you have Now for this next project, to make the planter, you're going to grab some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and hot glue it in a spiral pattern. You can make this however big you wanted. I didn't want a huge planter, so just when you're finished, cut off the end and hot glue onto there. And then to make the whole sides of the planter, you're going to grab that same nautical rope and start on top all around the edges. When one of the nautical rope ends, you'll just connect the two at the very top, get it as close as you can and just keep hot gluing. Once it's as tall as you want, just cut off the excess and hot glue it. Then I put floral foam inside. And I'm going to be using this greenery that I got from Dollar Tree. Then go ahead and stick it in the floral foam. And then to finish it off, I added white rocks from Dollar Tree. I saw these really cool hexagon boxes from Dollar Tree and I thought it could make a really cool modern planter. For this, you will only need the base and you will spray paint it with the rust -Oleum white spray paint. For the sides, I just used a plunger from Dollar Tree and take off the bottom. Measuring from where the plunger was stuck on, you will measure at 5, 10, and 15 inches. That will make each of the stands 5 inches long. What we use to cut wood is this Black & Decker jigsaw. It is very affordable and has worked great for us, and there's a link in the description below. With all of the pieces cut, we will just need to sand them down. To create the part that will hold the planter, I'm using a 12 inch dowel from Dollar Tree. You will need three of them, and I measured them at three and one eighth. I stained everything using the Minwax Dark Walnut Stain. Let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite stain that we should try out.
I measured about how far up I wanted the planter to go and I made a mark on all three of the wood pieces and that's where I'm gluing the smaller dowels onto. You will glue them all on sticking straight up on all three of the pieces. Now line them up so they are evenly spaced and do quite a bit of hot glue in the center to hold them. This is what it looks like fully painted and also I put floral foam inside to hold the fake plants and also we are going to put moss on top and I didn't want to have to fill it all with moss. The greenery and moss are also from Dollar Tree. I'm using this new spray adhesive from Dollar Tree and spraying it on top of all the floral foam. And then I'm sticking all the moss on top. I cut just a little bit of the end off and stuck the plant inside. Now you just need to stick the planter into the base. When I was finished, I didn't like how bright green the moss was, so I went over just with some black chalk paint to make it a little bit duller. Also, you can just use rocks, dirt, or a darker moss. I grabbed a piece of the 3D wreaths from Dollar Tree. Take a pair of pliers and just pull off these little circles. Then I sprayed the whole thing with the Rust-Oleum Gold Spray Paint. I'm using these beads that I got from Amazon, but Dollar Tree does have beads that you can spray paint, and I spray painted three of them. And then I'll be using this yarn that I also got from Dollar Tree. This is what it'll look like after you spray paint it. To measure this out, I measured from the top of the circle and then down as far as I wanted the yarn to hang. And you will need four pieces of yarn this length. Once you have them this length, go ahead and tie them around the top and then we will be tying these pieces around the bottom. Separate the strands and tie them all evenly. When we tie these four strands, there will be eight smaller strands hanging at the bottom and that's what will be spaced evenly across the whole thing. Now you are going to measure from the bottom of the hoop all the way down to where the string hangs and we are going to cut out five of these pieces. So with it folded in half there will be ten strands hanging down and just wrap it around the bottom of the hoop. To cover up the first strands that we did, just go over top of that one strand. Now 
And now we will just do this across the whole entire bottom. For this whole project, I only used two rolls of the yarn. I just barely, barely needed that second roll to do the last two strands. This is what it should look like once you are finished with the whole bottom. To finish it off, I grab just one piece of string and I'm tying it directly in the middle. I put tape over the bottom of the string so that the beads would slide on nicely. And then I put the beads on. Once that's finished, just tie a knot at the very bottom so they don't fall. This final one is a dupe from something that I saw online, but it was for $200 and I definitely am not going to pay that for something so simple like this. So I just took these wood squares from Dollar Tree and I will be gluing them together like stairs. To make this, you need to grab two pieces and hot glue down the side of one of them and then place it on the other at a 90 degree angle and then keep doing the same thing just downwards like stairs. This is what it should look like when it's complete. This is using only one package of the squares from Dollar Tree and we will need to add some support. One option is to grab these tumbling tower blocks and place them at the top where the two pieces meet and the bottom. I personally didn't like how it was so obvious. I wanted something a little bit more minimal. So what I decided to do was grab one of these grill toppers and I'll be using wire cutters to cut this so that I have just the edge piece so that I can hot glue it on there and it will be a lot more stable. Once you have all your pieces cut out, just go ahead and hot glue it on. This was all it took for me to stabilize the whole entire piece. And just remember to add these to every corner. If anyone has any tips about how to stabilize this a little bit better, this is the only way that worked for me. I tried using nails on the side and the staple gum, but they were just a little bit too big for this project. This is what it looked like after I added all of the supports in the back. I really like that you can't see them and it's very minimal. To finish it off, I went in with this natural wood stain from Minwax. I know it's really hard to see on camera, but it looks really pretty in person and it's just enough to make the piece look finished. To hang this, I will be showing you a clip in a second how I put two nails at the bottom of each platform and then one at the top just to hold everything together. And then to decorate, I used everything from Dollar Tree except for the long hanging plant. This next project, you will grab a large and a small 3D wreath form from Dollar Tree and you will use the biggest hoop. And you will also need a 12 inch dowel. You will want to take off these metal pieces and they come off really easy. 
I will be using the Minwax Dark Walnut Stain for the 12 inch dowel and then these beads that I got from Amazon and there's a link in the description below. I spray painted both of the hoops with the Rust-Oleum Gold Spray Paint. We will be attaching them so that the smaller circle is more at the top with this Dollar Tree twine. Make a loop that's long enough so that you can hang it. You will put it around the smaller one and then you will add one of the beads and then you will put it around the larger one and add the rest of the beads. If you are ever wondering what stain or paint or products that we use for these projects, there is a list in the description below. Now that we've added all the beads, you will place the 12 inch dowel just in the center of the smaller ring. The yarn that I will be using for the smaller ring is this white yarn from Dollar Tree and I will be cutting them at 18 inches long. After you have your 18 inch pieces cut, you will fold it in half in a group of five and then wrap it around the ring. With the first ring finished, just lift up that yarn and we will work on the next ring. I couldn't find black yarn at Dollar Tree, so I just grabbed this from Walmart. This huge bundle was about $3, I believe, and we will be doing these at 28 inches long. Once those are all done and cut, you will just get groups of five like we did before, fold it in half, and wrap it over the bottom ring. This time, you will go a little further than we did with the white. In the end, I felt like it needed some more brown at the end where the black is, so I stained six more beads from Amazon, and I will be putting tape at the bottom of one of the middle strands, and I put two beads kind of towards the end, and then I went three strands over and did two more beads slightly up, and then I did it on the other side as well, two beads the same height as the ones on the right. The tape really, really helps if you're trying to get the beads on, so I definitely would recommend doing that at the top with the twine as well. Then to finish it off, go ahead and hang it up and you will cut it either in more of a curved kind of pattern or in a triangle. project we're going to be making some boho wall art and a little tray what we're using here is an 8 by 10 canvas frame i'm going to go ahead and use a razor blade to cut around the outside of these staples that way what we can do is just remove the entire canvas from the frame and we don't have to worry about trying to get those staples out so I wanted to give you guys a quick heads up. Make sure to check the canvas frame before you cut the canvas off. Some of these have a lime green hue to it and it would look really weird if you left it as is or if you tried to stain it. So check that before you cut the canvas off. If you see that, just keep the canvas on and use it for another project, maybe wall art or something like that because it, it, I promise it won't look good. I ended up switching this out for another frame you'll see here in just a little bit. And then if you have any excess of that actual canvas, go ahead and rip that off. It should come off easily. So we're gonna be using this bag from Dollar Tree. I thought it was a really neat kind of boho vibe going on here. So I thought it would be cool to make a little wall art piece. So uh, what we're doing is I'm lining up the left side here with the crease at the bottom of the bag. 
And then on the right side, I'll just draw a straight line and then I'll make my cuts around there so that we'll have just a rectangular piece to fit in our canvas. And for cutting, I'm just using some simple scissors or you can even use a razor blade to cut these off. If you guys are wondering, these are Dollar Tree scissors and I would highly recommend getting a nicer pair. Spend a little bit more money, get something. They, just to be honest, they do not cut very well at all. Now that we've got the rectangular piece cut out, you can see the frame will fit over nicely. And now to give it a little bit more strength and durability, I'm just gonna glue it to some poster board. Now in the long run here, when I turned it into a tray, I would recommend gluing it to either some wood or some foam board just to give it a little bit more strength. But if you're hanging it up for a wall art, the poster board will work just fine. And again, just using a razor blade to cut this out. This is the first time me trying this spray glue from Dollar Tree. I wasn't a huge fan, at least for what I was doing here. It kind of started warping the poster board. So maybe just use like a glue stick and go around the edges and then the center here to glue it down together. It worked okay, but it wasn't that user friendly to work with. That's just my personal opinion. Once I have that glued on, we can move forward to gluing the actual picture here on the back of the frame. So I just put a few dots in each corner for the first part, and then I'll hold those down until they're dry, and then I'll go around and glue the sides down. So this is originally how I was gonna leave it with like the natural wood look on the frame. You could even add a little bit of a light stain to it, but I was gonna leave it just for like a wall decor piece or maybe a desk decor, but I wanted to take it a little bit further and turned it into a tray. So I'm using this gloss white spray paint from Rust-Oleum and we're gonna go ahead and spray the entire frame. While that's drying, we can put together the handles. I'm using these little cubes from Dollar Tree and the six inch dowels. So you're gonna use two of these cubes and just glue that dowel right in the middle of both of those. After we've got those glued together, we can move on to painting. I wanted something that was close to that gold on the pattern. So this is what I found probably the closest. It's kind of a rose gold color from Rust-Oleum. As you can see, it kind of matches with that pattern that we have here. And then after we've got all of that painted and completed, we can move on to putting it together. First, what I did was, since we're using it as a tray, I wanted to give it a little bit more strength so that we're not tearing through that. We can place things on it. So I just put um, a couple coats here of the Mod Podge and to seal it up a little bit. Now we can move on to putting it all together. Now keep in mind, yours will not look as rough as mine and that was just because I had to peel the backing off so I could paint the frame. And right here, I'm just eyeballing as close to center as possible when I put these handles on. Now, I thought this was really cool. I liked how the tray turned out, a little bit different and definitely gives it that modern boho look. Let me know what you guys think. Do you like it more as like a wall art piece with the natural wood frame or do you like it as the tray? For this project, you will need two of the six by eight canvases. The easiest way that I have found to get the canvas off is to take a flathead screwdriver and pry up all the staples and then grab pliers and pull them off. Once you take the canvas off, you'll be left with these two wooden frames. I drew a straight line at the bottom and that's where we're going to cut so that the ends are flat. 
What we use to cut all our wood is this black and decker jigsaw and there's a link in the description below for this. This is what you'll be left with after you cut and we will be staining and gluing these together. You'll just want to sand down the end just a little bit and go in with the dark walnut minwax stain. And this is what it looks like after you've stained. Now we just need to hot glue both of the ends together. To create a backing for this, I just grabbed a black piece of poster board from Dollar Tree and I traced the inside and I just cut it out. Then to create the design, we'll be grabbing these craft sticks from Dollar Tree. Cut off the curved end on one side of a lot of these. This is the pattern that I am going for. You can do whatever pattern you would like for this. And then I just started hot gluing them onto the poster board in the pattern that I liked. For the small gaps, just cut the crafting sticks to size. For all the ones that I've laid down so far, I'm going to be painting them with the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. And then I painted four of the crafting sticks white, also by Waverly. And then I stained two of them. Now it's time to hot glue the white ones on. Then you'll go in with the stained ones. And then the white ones once again. To finish it off, I just lined up the crafting sticks how I liked the end, and then I'm staining all the rest. Now lay the frame on top and we'll be tracing all around the outside so that we know where to cut. Then cut on your lines all the way around. To finish it off, we just need to hot glue the corners of the frame and put it on top. If you have any left over on the sides, just cut those as well.
For this last project, all you will need is a Dollar Tree hula hoop and Dollar Tree yarn. The first thing you will need to do is take off this outer casing that's on the hula hoops. I found the easiest way is to kind of make a slit all the way around and then try and rip it off. And this is what it looks like after you do that. You will pull it apart and get all of the little beads that are inside as well. And then I just hot glued it shut so it wouldn't come undone. You can definitely leave it this color. I wanted to spray paint it gold, but I haven't found a really good gold spray paint that doesn't stick after a few days of leaving it to dry. If you guys have any recommendations, I would love to hear it in the comments. But I used the Rust-Oleum chalk paint, and then we'll be taking this yarn and go ahead and just measure how long you want it and then cut it. And then you'll be left with all these loops on this end and then go ahead and wrap it over the top and tie it. And now you can just keep doing the same thing for about a third of the way down on both sides. I wouldn't worry too much about how long your string is because you can just cut it into whatever shape you want at the end. So this is how far I went on both sides. Like I said, it's about a third of the way and you would just take scissors and I cut out a V shape. And it is easiest to cut it when it is hanging. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to go through to our Boho playlist. We'll have a link right here for you. I know you'll love those just as much. And as always guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.